Hi, this is Don, and I'm an old school kind of guy. Now, I started a, a, an avalanche, <laughs> snowball effect of questions based on some previous videos I've done on testing water. I put them all in a playlist, and I'll add the link to that in the description to this video. But one of the questions uh, sent me off beyond my knowledge. And so this is not old school. This is old school learning new school. <sighs> Several people commented about using zeolite when you have ammonia problems. And so I did some research. I've looked at it more than once. And I learned a lot. I'll admit, I never even heard of zeolite back in the old days. Don't know if it was around. I'm not going to worry about it. What I've discovered leads me to believe zeolite is probably only for emergencies and then not on well established aquariums. <coughs> um. One of the effects of zeolite is it reduces the food available for the nitrifying bacteria. You know, the good stuff. Um, could it be helpful in a quick starting an aquarium? I'm, I'm sure it could. Um, will I do it? No. Will I recommend it to anybody? No. Uh, I recommend uh, taking filter or filter material out of other tanks, part of it, and moving it in into the new tank if you want a quick start. Works fine. Um, zeolite, by nature, has an affinity for calcium. Uh, so that means it's not going to work well in hard water. And I'm not a plant expert, but I believe plants use calcium too. And if zeolite is going to deplete your calcium levels, that's probably not good. Now where zeolite comes from can make a big difference for you. And I'm going to just talk about North America. Because zeolite can be found all over the world. And you want to research zeolite, go ahead and look it up. How's it formed, so forth and so on. Um, but if you get zeolite that was formed in northern USA, well, probably Canada too. I don't know that. But northern USA has a lot in common with Canada, so I'm guessing. Northern USA zeolite has extra sodium in it. That can help with the ammonia issues. But sodium is what? Salt. Uh, I have quarry cats. They do not deal with salt very well. And there are many other fish that don't deal with salt very well. I think I'm going to keep zeolite out of my tanks. Now, southern zeolite, on the other hand, remember I said zeolite has an affinity for calcium? Well, southern zeolite as by nature has extra calcium in it. So that might be good. Hmm. Does oh and one of the questions people asked me was does zeolite reduce the pH in your tank? Well I tried to find any expert that I thought was even close to an expert to find the answer to that and the best I could find, find was somebody that says, well, it depends. <laughs> okay, so does zeolite lower the pH? Well, possibly. Because it tends to soften the water by removing calcium. But that doesn't necessarily lower pH, and that's a different study than this. Um, but if you need to lower your pH, uh, zeolite's not the way to go. Um, you know, the best way, in my opinion, is old school peat, 
peat moss. Peat. I mean, that's what it does. Also makes your water turn yellow to brown to black. Depends on how much you use. So use it judiciously. Um, there was one form that I found that did very well with ammonia. It was clinopatiolite or something like that. Um, but that one seemed to be considered the best for dealing with ammonia. Um, here's, here's something. Make sure you only use zeolite that says on the package, safe for aquarium use. For instance, zeolite is used in a lot of cat litter. Don't use that in your fish tank. Um, zeolite that's made for fresh water or packaged for fresh water will not work with salt water. Zeolite that is packaged for salt water will work with fresh water. Something to consider. <clears throat> now, if you're going to use zeolite, remember this, it loses its potency very, very fast. So you have to replace it frequently. Um, you can you can just put it in a mesh bag and put it in your aquarium I don't know if it was me I'd put it in a mesh bag and put it inside a HOB or a canister but like I said you gotta replace it probably once a month depending on how much you're using I'll come back to that um, you know how do you know how much to use that'd be the question so do your normal testing and find out how much ammonia you have in parts per million and divide that by one and a half. Now multiply that by the number of liters in your tank, or quarts if you will. Um, and that's the, the, that number is how many grams of zeolite you should be using. Um, adding salt or any kind of revitalizer will cause zeolite to release everything it's absorbed. This goes back to what I talked about in another video where it's adsorbed, A-D, and I'm saying absorbed, A-B. I do know the difference, but zeolite adsorbs. It connects on the outside. So when it releases, it releases very quickly and very efficiently. <laughs> um, so don't add salt or any of the revitalizing agents that we, some of us, like to use. Um, now, on that, on that point, though, you can actually take zeolite and put it in a tank or a bucket or whatever that's, that contains uh, water that's about 5% salt. Um, use, our, your, use your hydrometer leave it in there for about 24 hours it'll release everything you pull it out and you can reuse it um, just dry it in thin layers uh, for 24 maybe 48 hours and uh, you know if it's really rainy outside or something you can bake it in the oven at 350 degrees for about 30 minutes so there you go that's a quick overdue of zeolite which this old school guy didn't know diddly squat about, but that's okay. I can learn too. <laughs> hey, I have fun learning. And you know what? This hobby has taught me a lot over the years. And that's part of the fun. So go have fun with your fish and learning about them. Bye.